Today we're going to talk about evaluating our drilling prospect and specifically how we estimate the reserve potential for our prospect. So when we're evaluating our prospect, we have to determine three things. We have to estimate the chance of finding oil and gas, and then how much oil and gas will we find? How big will the reservoir be? And the third thing you have to determine is what would be the profit if we drill the well? So that gets into economics. So we've talked about number one in a previous video. So today we're going to concentrate on number two. How, how do we estimate the size of the oil and gas pro prospect? How much will we find? How big is the reservoir that we're drilling for? How do we determine that? Well, we can use volumetric analysis, but because there's uncertainty on how big it is, uh, it's going to be you know uncertain when if we do that. So what we have to do is we have to add a Monte Carlo analysis, Monte Carlo analysis to the volumetrics, and this helps define the range of outcomes or the size of the reservoir, how big it could be or how small it could be. All right, to start the valuation, you have to look at what data do you know? What do you know about the well area? So in this case, our target reservoir has been produced by several wells in the area. And these offset wells produce gas and condensate. So we're expecting gas for our prospect. And we know the nearby formations are abnormally high pressured, so that's good information. And we have the production log data from the offset wells. So we have some information from offset fields in the area, and we're going to use that uh, combined with the data we have on our prospect to help evaluate the size of the prospect. All right, we are expecting gas in our prospect, so we have to estimate the gas reservoir parameters of area, thickness, porosity, water saturation, gas formation volume factor, condensate yield, and recovery factor. So we have to estimate a range of all these things because we don't know exactly what these values will be. All right, the first thing, uh, let's look at this seismic structure map with amplitude. So the bright amplitude is a yellow and red, and we believe this to be a sand thickness or hydrocarbon indicator. And we're gonna use this map to help determine the reservoir area for our prospect. Our prospect is the black star. It's going to be located right into the bright amplitude where we think that's a good hydrocarbon indicator. All right, so the professionals, geologists, engineers look at this information, and they, what we can do is maybe uh, draw a polygon around the bright amplitude that's contiguous with the well location. And we may say that could be the low side area for the prospect of 470 acres. And we have to assign a probability to that. We'll go into that later. All right. So we also can say, well, what if the reservoir, you know, the shape of the reservoir and the faults, it could be this big. That would be the high side area of 1,910 acres. So now we have a range of areas for the drilling prospect. All right. The second thing we have to estimate is the reservoir thickness. So the best way to do it would be to look at the offset wells and how thick are they. So we have some data reservoir thickness and we plot each well's thickness from offset wells on this cumulative distribution plot just to give us an idea of how big of a range the thicknesses are in the area and we can uh, get the average of the offset wells the p90 value p50 and p10 so this data on offset wells we can use it to help us estimate the expected thickness for our prospect so we've looked at area and thickness and kind of how you can characterize them. And you have to do this for all the other parameters, but I'm just, I'm just gonna go over these two, so we're not gonna show you all of them. All right, so the next thing, you have to set up the Monte Carlo analysis. And to do this, we use the Crystal Ball software, which is an XL add-on that you have to buy. So let's see how that's done. All right, so we have an Excel spreadsheet with Crystal Ball loaded to here. This is Crystal Ball. And we have our Monte Carlo analysis parameters that we're setting up. So we have all the reservoir data. 
and we may estimate a most likely value for each one and then a low and a high value for each of the parameters. But we have to, we have to assign a, a probability value for all these ranges. So we, these green boxes are our Monte Carlo uh, simulation in crystal ball, how we set up the distribution. So let's look at the first one, the porosity. All right, so we have uh, porosity ranges, you know, could be, it could be as low as 15% all the way to 30%. And we're using a triangular distribution to define the porosity. Let's look at the B sub G formation volume factor. We have a range of uh, formation volume factors based on the pressure and the temperature and everything that we've looked at in the reservoir. So we have a range, we're using a triangular distribution for the formation volume factor. The recovery factor, let's look at that. We have a range of recovery factors, but we're using a log normal distribution because we believe this is more appropriate for the for recovery factor. But also you have to put these little endpoints in. The low the lowest low is 0.43 and the highest it could be is 0.84. So we clip the we clip the distributions so they can't be unreasonably large or small. So you have to do you have to define this distribution and may have to put some endpoints on them. All right, the net thickness. So we had the data from the offset well, so we have to kind of com describe how thick it could be uh, using, you know, and assigning P90s and P10s to the different values. And we're using a log normal for this one also. And then the prospect area. We kind of bracketed it using the map, some of the information from the map. And the map is not perfect, but it does give us a you know, range of areas. So we, can, we have to use all this when we define these uh, distributions. And the engineers and the geologists all have to agree on all these things. All right, so the green are the distributions that we're setting up and defining. The blue cells are the forecasts that we're going to make. So, for instance, we are going to show the unit recovery factor just to make sure that's reasonable. And then we're going to show the, uh, the gas reserve potential and the oil reserve potential. So this is all a volumetric formula that we use. And when we run the simulation, it helps generate a range of outcomes. So let's go ahead and run the simulation. So we press start. And we're going to run 20,000 iterations of the, on the uh, distribution. So all right, so here's the unit recovery in MCI per acre foot. We just like to generate that and show that so we can make sure it looks reasonable, you, you know, based on the porosity and water saturation. All right, so down at the bottom is the red. Is This is the gas reserve potential distribution. So we have like a P90 of 10 BCF and a P10 of 71 BCF. So what that means is the P90 means it's a 90% chance that you're at least going to find 10 BCF or more. The green would be the, the oil reserves or the condensate reserve distribution. All right, so let's recap. All right, we can capture the gas reserve potential from the Monte Carlo simulation. So again, you got the P10 of 10 BCF and the P1 of 145 BCF. So it defines the range of what we could find when we drill this well. And we have the same thing for the oil potential. All right, so let's recap. You can go ahead and uh, summarize everything of your different products, gas and oil, and you can define the uh, probability. So P90 means there's a 90% a chance that if we drill this well, it will find at least 10 BCF or greater. But 71 BCF, there's only a 10% chance you're going to find more than 71 BCF. And the same thing for the oil. So this defines the distribution of our drilling prospect. Now that's unrisk, so the next, day, uh, the next thing would be to put the risk factors on there and the economics. But that will be talked about in another video. All right, so that's how you do it. I hope that was informative. And just please contact me if you have any questions.